Okay, I am making a quick video to talk about the summary points from the book Everyone Gets to Play by John Wimber. And um, so many things in this book impacted me. In chapter one, he talks about laying our lives fully down for Jesus. And um, one of the things he talks about is having a violence in the core of who we are to give Jesus, to actively give Jesus everything that we are. Um, and he talks about um, even our calling is not just about following Jesus, but it's about denying ourselves. And actually, it's not just about calling, but he talks about us laying our very lives upon the altar and our calling not being about if I can do this thing or this thing or what if I do this, but it actually being about laying our lives upon the altar of sacrifice and offering ourselves daily to Jesus. And he talks about this being our calling, that we would offer our lives to Jesus. And then um, he talks about sacrifice. Um, and the the verse where Jesus says, "I desire mercy, not sacrifice." And uh, um, but but he but he came. But the Bible says that he came to call righteous, not not the righteous, but sinners. Um, and so I, what what I really was thinking about as I was reading the book is that our obedience is a byproduct of real love. And obedience is always a sacrifice, um, but is a byproduct of love. And sacrifice, I believe, when it's rooted in love, um, comes easily because it is our very nature to give everything in love when we are responding to the one who is love. And it's amazing because obedience always commands a blessing. So when we live a life of sacrifice, um, for Jesus, we live a life of love for him and our obedience rooted in love commends his blessing upon our lives. Isn't that amazing? And then um, in chapter two, he talks about love. And um, one of the things that uh, I think is so important, um, and as I was reading that chapter is um, he was talking about searching for the gold in other people. Um, and I think it's so important for us in our lives that we, um, it, it, there's a, so many flaws everywhere when we look around in human nature and we look around at the world. And, um, and if we're looking for flaws, we're always going to find them. And so if we're walking around critical and we're looking for things that are going wrong or things people are doing wrong, it will be easy to find those. But I challenge you, it's a lot harder to look past the flaws and the fallen nature of man and to find the gold inside of people and situations, right? So we have to approach situations with love, bypassing um, the criticism and going deep to the core to search for gold. Um, and when, we, when we're looking for gold, we always can find it. And I believe that real love, actually, the Bible says that Jesus delighted in showing mercy. And so he, it says he was actually excited about showing mercy. And the definition of mercy um, is that someone would get the opposite of what they deserve. And so if that's true, if Jesus is excited about showing someone the opposite of what they deserve, and if he did that for us, how much more should we do that for other people? And so I believe that we can make a commitment to looking at the lives around us and pulling um, out the gold and others. The book also talks about a commitment to Jesus and not just in our Christian walk and in our discipline and in our devotion to Jesus, um, not just living a life that is partially committed, but commitment being over a long period of time, laying down our lives in committed devotion over a long period of time. It was what brings real fruit. When we commit to something, um, we will see a lot more fruit than if we're halfway committed. And um, I remember I watched a video once where Hattie Baker said, if we don't quit, we win. And so I just really believe that um, as he was talking about commitment, that um, we can bear a lot of fruit if we are committed to the things that Jesus asked us to do, we're, if we're committed to the commands of Scripture. And our commitment is seen in our willingness to give everything to Jesus in every moment. Chapter in the next chapter, he talks about maturity, spiritual maturity, maturity in the gifts. Um, and, and in this chapter, um, he talks about uh, when we carry gifting and anointing, but we lack character. And I think, right, I know I, I have done this where 
Um, I, you know, was walking in a gifting, but I didn't have the character actually for that gifting. And I think w development of character is when we face trials and persecution, um, but we remain strong on the inside. And so um, uh, I love this chapter because it just talks about maturity being rooted in um, our character and the resolve to do and say everything for the good of other people. And so if we live with that resolve, our character is secure, is secure when we live in the resolve to do everything for the good of other people. Um, there's so many more things I could share. I'm going to end in a little bit. Um, but uh, he covers money, talking about being generous with our money and how money is given to us to test us to see if we will live with what is given to us for ourselves or if we'll live outward focus and live for other people. And so I think primarily with money, we have to live generously and outward focus um, because money is simply uh, something that is um, of this world that tests our hearts to see if we'll use it for ourselves or if we'll use it for the good of others. And so all of what we have should be laid at the feet of Jesus and surrender. Um, and uh, he talks about prayer in this book and um, prayer uh, being what moves the heart of God. And one of the things I thought was really cool is he mentions um, real prayer, actually believing that God hears us and answers us and that prayer actually does shift things. Prayer actually does change um, and it opens the storehouses of heaven to us and it changes the world that we live in. Um, it aligns us with the will of God. Um, prayer is when God meets our weakness with his strength. And so when we pray, God meets our weakness with his strength. And so um, there's so many more things. Um, towards the end of the book, um, he talks about being uh, committed to your community and going to church regularly. And then uh, in one of the last chapters, he talks about evangelism and us needing to have a heart that is outward focused, reaching the lost, sharing the gospel everywhere we go. He talks about hardship and death and how to walk through hard things. Um, and then um, talking about leadership um, and how we need leaders who live outward focused lives um, and who lay their lives down and how uh, the very core of leadership is servanthood, outward focus. And as leaders, we're just stewarding the authority that God has given us and so the author everything that we do with authority as leaders is not actually our authority, um, but, it, but it's God's authority and he's allowing us to steward it. And so our primary goal as leaders should be to serve with everything that we're given um, and to build others up. And so this is the end of my video uh, of the summary of the book, Everyone Gets to Play. Love everyone.